All right, guys. Uh, let's uh, begin part two here. So I'm going to start off by installing the barrel nut, and we're going to torque this to spec. So first thing I'm going to do, as per directions, install a little Loctite. Now I know uh, some guys think you should, shouldn't, but uh, the directions from the Midwest Industries actually provided it. Told uh, as I read it, said to put it. So we're going to put some on there. So I'm just going to add it throughout the threads because you got to remember once I pin my muzzle brake this isn't coming off unless I do damage. Alright so I got it there so we're going to screw this on. I just wanted to make sure as I screwed the barrel nut I wasn't hitting this and giving it a false sense of uh, being torqued down. So, alright, it's on there. Hand. I see something else I want to check. Now, guys, again, this is the first time I'm doing this. So, just bear with me. I wanted to make sure that the pin for the door wasn't too far this way, in which it was. It was actually sticking out like that. So I just loosened everything up and pushed it back with my thumb as far as it would go. So just give me a second to resituate myself and get everything back the way it was. <clears throat> Sorry, a little unprepared here. But like I said, I'm learning. You guys are learning with me. If anybody has any uh, other techniques or anything that can help out, feel free to share. So Loctite's on there. Directions say 30 to 80 foot-pounds in that range. Anywhere where I could get um, the hole in here to line up for the gas tube. So now I'm going to use my wheeler armorer's tool. Got the two notches there. They're actually on both sides. So I'm just going to find two holes that it goes in. Just like that. And I'm going to take my torque wrench that came with the kit. And holding pressure inward this way so nothing slips, I'm going to torque it. Believe it or not, that's about 50 foot pounds right there. So now, now I'm gonna have to adjust it, I know that, to get my holes to line up. But that's what this part back here, see my finger back here? If I can push that all the way in, then it's pretty much lined up. So I'm gonna. Line these back up in the holes just like that. With one hand, I'm just going to lift the torque wrench. Like that. And push in. Like so. And I think I got it lined up, guys. So, obviously, when I put the gas tube on the front sight, on the front sight block, I'm going to verify that everything lines up on the inside. So, now that that's on, <clears throat> and forewarn you guys, I didn't get the Midwest Industry Spanner Wrench. I didn't realize until I read the directions I opened it, you need it for this. I don't know any other way of tightening it, but, uh, that's going to have to be at a later date. I'm going to have to order that wrench. But we can still put everything else on. So I'm going to run this. This locking nut back. 
We're going to do a dry fit first. Just to make sure everything does line up. Now you got to be careful here. We got very fine threads here. And I don't want to mess anything up. But once you get it going, you can pretty much spin it. You want to do it so that until it touches or gets pretty damn close. And before I go any further, this is the bottom of the rail, and it has a little hole here, and that's for, uh, uh, let me grab it, where is it, uh, right here, Th that's for the anti-vibration locking pin, I think they call it, it looks like that, you're going to insert that in like that, tighten it down, obviously from the bottom guys, and that will prevent it from vibrating loose. One more turn, I think. I think that's going to be it. Uh, let's try it, see. Oh, right there, guys. That lines up like that. Makes it almost like a mono rail, like a solid rail. And what I would do now, I'm going to take... Well, I know it lines up. The directions say to put the vibration screw in. And just by hand, tighten everything up. Make sure you like the alignment of everything. Which, I'm not going to do that because then I'd have to take it back out. And So, me knowing that it lines up now. And everything actually looks pretty damn good. I like that. I'm going to back this ring back off. And then I'm going to unspin this. You know, until it's almost off, and the directions tell me to add some uh, Loctite to these threads also. So anything that's going to prevent it from spinning, you know, spinning off, I don't mind doing. Grab my blue Loctite again. I'm gonna put some on the threads here. Now, honestly, I don't think I have to go too crazy with it because as I spin it, it's gonna drag the Loctite through the threads. Right there. <clears throat> Alright. So now it also tells me to take some blue Loctite and put it on the vibration screw. So now I'm going to do this and try and catch it from the bottom. So you might actually see me get, get down on my knee. Well, let's not even go there. Let's not even go there. And this screw here, you, there is no torque setting. It says tighten by hand or finger tight only. Oh, there goes my phone. I'm going to snug this ring. I'm going to snug this uh, locking nut here by hand once I feel I have everything lined up. Like so, it feels good, it looks good, and when I get my 
spanner wrench that I'm going to order tonight, I'll just snug that up and tighten it up. So I'm going to, with the supplied Allen key that Midwest uh, Industries sent me, I'm just going to finger tighten it. Just my fingers. Wow. There's no movement in that whatsoever. And like I said, I'm going to get the spanner wrench. Tighten that down. This is nice and smooth. It actually lines up nice. Wow. Impressive. Alright. So basically, that was it for that, guys. Now I'm going to bring you back over to the bench over here. I'm going to install the front sight block and the gas tube together. And we're going to slide that on. So give me a second, guys. Alright, so now we're going to... This is a gas block that my brother picked up for me at a gun show. Uh, this is the handguard height. It's bigger. It's not the low profile. So I should be able to put um, a sight right on here. No problems with it folding down. No issues whatsoever. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to make sure the hole for... Let me get a little closer. The hole for the gas faces down. And I'm just going to line it up like that. I'm going to use my... My trusty gas block if it fits. I don't know if it does fit. No, I guess I won't, huh? That sucks. Nope, it's like a puzzle, like a retarded puzzle. But I guess I could still use it to some some extent here. Alright, I could see the daylight there. If I pull this back, you can't see it no more. Push it forward. So now I know I'm lined up. And I'm going to take the supplied uh, roll pin and we're gonna start that like so and I'm gonna take my non broken punch and we're just gonna set this in here There it goes. Let me get the thinner one because I got it flush with the gas block and I don't want any issues. So let me. Alright, so everything looks good. My curve is going up like it should. So let me uh, reposition you again and we'll stick it on the gun. Alright, guys, um, I almost forgot. I already uh, prepped up the gas block, I took the two bolts out. I put some Loctite on it, and I was about to turn on the camera when I realized I almost forgot to put that on. My trim ring. That would have sucked, went through all that to find out that I didn't put it on. Wow, the package is hard as hell open. I think I would have been ready. Okay. So here's your trim ring. Comes with four uh, little screws. This obviously has to go on first. It's got the little cutout opening for the gas tube. This will give it a more finished look that I was uh, looking for. So I'm just, I'm not going to tighten these down individually. In other words, like once I get this one started, I'm going to continue and put the rest in. I'm not going to tighten it down. And the reason for that is for alignment. If you tighten it down and it twists a little bit, you're never going to catch the other, the other two or three screws.
And once you get them all caught, then you could go and snug them up. And then I'm only snugging. I'm not uh, torquing them down or nothing. Because I'd like to do that in a... Uh, look at me reaching across the camera. I'd like to do that. I'd like to crisscross them similar to like a car tire. All right, so now torque that one down. And I'm only using German specs, guys. Good and tight. So I did these two first. All right, and now I'm going to jump to these two. Okay. So what do you think about that, guys? That's on. All right, let me pull up my chair here and knock and shoot on the floor. So now, like I said, hold on, guys, one second. Sorry about that. Um, like I said, I already took the two screws out, prepped them up with um, Loctite. So now I'm going to stick the tube through there. Now, if my tool worked properly, it should have lined the gas tube holes up perfectly. There you go. Wow, that's that's awesome. Okay, there's somebody's texting me. And that's my wife. She wants ice cream, guys. So she's just going to have to wait. Hope she doesn't watch this. Um, so now the get the gas porthole is on the top. So I want this to be perfectly vertical. Now I have my rail lined up with the receiver, so that should be perfectly vertical. So what I'm gonna do, I actually have the riser for another gas block. I'm gonna take that and slide it on. If I could slide it on and span over the gap here that should line these perfectly flat I don't have a level you know the little tiny levels or so I'm not even gonna worry about that and who knows if my ta tables level you know just if I do this in relation to the receiver like so that should be vertical right that should be perfect so now what I'm gonna do knowing that I already put Loctite on there as I told you guys 600 million times already. Gonna make sure it's all the way back. I'm gonna snug up each one of these screws. Just like that. And now I should be able to slide this off. Like that. So now I should be perfectly flat. Alright guys. Um, that's it for this segment. And I got a lot of flack the last time I... And that's probably her again. Yes it is. I got a lot of flack from uh, the way I pinned the muzzle brake the last time. So I said in another video I was thinking about getting a welder and doing it myself but right now my buddy's got a welder and I'm gonna drill the hole get a pin and bring it to him to weld I'm probably not gonna show you that aspect but I'll show you me cleaning off the weld and you know making it nice and nice and touching everything up so real quick let me I'm gonna get resituated and show you what it looks like I'm gonna clean up a little bit and show you what it looks like. I'm going to throw the muzzle brake on real quick. And you can get an overall picture and let me know what you think. Hold on guys. Alright guys. Here's what it's going to look like. There's the muzzle brake. It's not on yet. Well, physically it's on. It's not permanent yet. There's the front gas block. The new rail I just put on. Let me back up. It's got the Black Rain Ordnance uh, lower receiver. With a Timney drop-in trigger, Myod grip, uh, the CTR stock pinned. It's got a charging handle that 
Oh, they all have charging handles. Uh, Rainer Arms. Right now I can't do it. <laughs> One-handed. So guys, let me know what you think. I still have to get, uh, I want to get flip-up sights. And I want to get an optic of some sort. So let me, you know, let me know what you think. Right now I got the AF AFG I got to put on there. And I got the Troy Ambi Bolt release. That I'm going to put on this thing. So let me know what you think, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring. Take it easy.